In the last few years, we made some comprehensive workbench tutorials that explained why woodworking benches are built the way they are, what to look for if you're buying a bench, and even how to build your own bench from construction lumber. I'll link to those videos below if you want to check them out. But the most common workbench question I hear is how tall should a workbench be? And it would be nice if I could give you a number, but I can't because the perfect workbench height depends on a lot of different factors. What I can do is explain those factors so you can calculate the perfect workbench height for the type of work that you do. To begin, we have to go back to the beginning, the old-timey days, when old-timey woodworkers designed these workbenches for their old-timey shops and old-timey tools. What tool do you suppose they spent the most time using at their workbenches? Hand planes. In a world without electric joiners, planers, and sanders, every surface of every piece of wood was planed by hand, often more than once with more than one type of plane. In fact, a workbench isn't just a surface, it's a work holding jig. And if you're going to be planing at it all day long, it should hold your work at a comfortable level for hand planing. If you're working at a tall bench that forces you to hold your plane up near your belly, your arms will have to do all the work. And if the bench permits you to lower the plane, then the effort will be transferred more to your body and you're unlikely to wear out as quickly. In the really old timey days, many favored a bench top that came up to their middle knuckles as their arms dangled at their sides. This seemed ideal for wood body planes. When cast iron planes became more common, benches became a bit taller to account for the lower profile of these planes. Now wrist level seemed to be about the right height. Of course, you find old benches at all sorts of different heights, not just because woodworkers themselves came in different sizes, but because not everyone wanted to be a knuckle dragger or a wrist bumper. Some preferred a lower or taller bench because hand planing isn't the only thing done in a workshop. A lower bench is more comfortable for project assembly, for example. A good height for an assembly table is the tips of your fingers as you dangle your arm at your side. If you use a panel saw frequently, you may be more comfortable with a low bench, just below knee level. Cutting joinery is more comfortable and easier to see your work at a taller bench, perhaps about elbow level. Really, the only way to know what works best for you is to experiment. Get a pair of sawhorses and a piece of plywood. This will make a relatively low work surface, so you'll want to add some blocking to raise it up. Put a board on top because it's not the top of the bench that you work on, is it? It's the top of the board that's laying on top of your bench top. Now get some of the tools out that you plan to use most. Maybe you're a hand tool woodworker who uses a lot of planes. Maybe you're a power tool woodworker who uses a router or a jigsaw a lot. See how comfortable or uncomfortable it will be to use those tools at that height. I don't recommend turning the, the power tools on unless you've got your blocking beneath the sawhorses really secure but move the tools around and sort of get a feel for things. Add or remove blocking to adjust the bench higher or lower as needed. It's unlikely you're going to find one bench height that's perfect for everything. As I said, some tasks are better on a low bench, others on a high bench. So you may have to make some compromises. For example, if your eyesight isn't what it used to be, you may want a tall bench that brings your work up closer to you so you don't have to bend over as much to see what you're doing. It's all about experimenting. In a perfect world, we would have a different bench for each task. We'd have a knee-high saw bench, a wrist-high planing bench, an elbow-high joinery bench, and a fingertip-high assembly bench. But few of our shops exist in a perfect world. So here's another idea. Go with a bench that's comfortable for planing like this one. Then get yourself or build a special joinery jig that sits on top of the bench to bring your joinery work up closer to you. And if you like to dimension your boards with a panel saw, build a simple saw bench down low for that work. On our website, we have plans for a solid, traditional style Rubo workbench that you can build from construction lumber. We also have new plans for a featured pack split top saw bench, and we're currently working on plans for a joinery jig to go on top of your bench. You'll find links to all that, as well as several other bench related videos in the description below. Enjoy. This is a Koenigsegg, Sweden's finest sports car. This is a Joburgs, Sweden's finest workbench. There are things for people who appreciate quality and high performance, something they can pass down to their grandkids' grandkids. You can't afford this, but this will cost you less than a good cabinet saw. 
check out what Showbricks has to offer at the link below this video. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.